Hello everyone, today I will be explaining you in this video how we are preparing the ground and constructing the foundation in a water filled site. As you can see in the video, this site is completely a filled up soil with high water table. Here you can observe that the soil condition is very worst, it is loose soil. Just at a shallow depth you will be able to find the water logging in the site. As you can see in the site. Here in this video I will be explaining you how to combat these type of situations where there is loose filled up soil and high water table. There are multiple solutions to build the foundations and structure in a filled up soil, loose filled up soil and high water table site. The first and foremost solution which the engineering concept gives is pile foundation. In simple words pile foundation means boreholes will be digged to a greater depth and it will be filled with reinforcement concrete. But requirement of High skilled labors and high end machineries makes it expensive for smaller residential sites. Here in this video we will be explaining you what are the solutions we have adopted to combat this problem. It all started with the Bhumi Puja for our new project. Once the excavation was started and during the preliminary investigation it was found that the soil is very loose filled up soil and water table is high. It all started with the identification of borewell point and marking was started. Since it was mass excavation, only boundary marking has been done. Since the ground water table was high, we got the water at very shallow depth and you can observe in this video. Where we can see the water popping up from the ground at the ground level itself. Here you can observe as we are drilling the, for the bore well. The water is popping up from the ground, from the ground level itself. You can just imagine the amount of water table in this site. Since the water table was very high, obviously at a very lower depth we got a good amount of water from the bore well. As you can see here in this video. And since already the ground water content is high, we are making a path for this borewell water to drain from this space. Here we are excavating the complete site since we cannot go for isolated footings due to the bad condition of the soil. We have excavated the complete site where the house has to be built. And you can see the amount of water which has been logged inside the construction site. It is to be noted that these excavators should be used only to a particular depth and once it reaches the required depth, manual excavation has to be carried out as per the directions given by your structure engineer. And once the excavation has been done, the, all the water inside the site has to be dewatered using the pump. Here you can see the water has been collected in the site after the excavation. This has to be continuously pumped out of the excavated area until certain number of days as specified by your structure engineer. After continuous pumping out of water, at certain point of time, water level will be reduced. At that particular point of time, manual trenching has to be done such that at the corners of the entire plot, a trench has to be developed, diverting the entire water of the site to a particular point where the pump will be installed such that this methodology has to be uh, followed until a clear water will be observed in the site. We are following this methodology since we cannot give isolated footings or individual footings since the soil condition is very worst and since the soil condition is worst there will be unequal settlement in the foundation. This unequal settlement will always leads to the cracks or even greater damage to the structure. Hence we will be tying the foundation at the base level itself such that any displacement or settlement happens the entire settlement will be displaced or distributed throughout the entire foundation area. Now we can observe that water table has been reduced to a greater extent and now this complete area will be filled with soling. Soling is a method of 
preparing the ground before the PCC and foundation casting. In soling you need to grade the boulders with a size of 20 mm to up to 50 mm you can consider. The gap between these boulders should be filled with cement and sand aggregates and it has to be compacted thoroughly by earth rammers. This soling has to be done to a depth of minimum 300 mm if the water table and it depends on the various site conditions and it has to be followed as per your structure engineer guidance. This soling has to be done layer by layer and again filling with, with sand and cement admixtures and again filling up in layers and allowing to settle and compacting with earth rammers. This continuous process will prepare a hard base for your foundation. As you can see here over this PCC will be applied which is the base for the foundations above which our structure will be rested. This PCC is nothing but a low rich concrete. As you can see in this video, the ground has been completely prepared and PCC is being placed here. Whenever you are choosing the location for your house, you should be very specific on the type of the soil and you should be aware what type of soil has been available in that particular region. Because the site with loose soil at high water table may increase your budget up to 20-25% to in the foundation stage. Because in this type of soil, you may have to go with raft or combined footing for residential purpose of houses. The other solutions available for this type of soil is pile foundations. But doing pile foundations to smaller area becomes expensive and finding the vendors skilled labors to do pile foundation is also difficult in small scale. That is why this side we are going with raft type of foundation where you can observe that the wherever the column comes we have created a band here along the periphery and wherever the center column is there that center column has been connected with the peripheral row so that all the columns are interconnected in the footing level itself and such that no unequal settlement happening in the foundation stage. These columns you can see here will be placed at the respective positions on the footing. Here in our case we have provided, we have placed the columns and additional mat at the top has been provided that depends on your structural designer and the type of load and multiple factors like spacing column base coming to the steel details the bottom mat we have provided the longer bars are 12 mm dia placed at 6 inch center to center and the shorter bars are 10 mm dia at 6 inch center to center and these details differs on the soil conditions and the loadings and you can also observe at the periphery we have provided with retaining walls on three sides of the side except in the front side. These retaining walls we have considered for two purposes. The first purpose is to provide the strength along the longitudinal directions for the bottom footing. And the second one is since the adjacent sides are empty few in future when the owners want to construct their house during the construction stage if any excavation happens they should not affect the structural stability of this building such that no soil should collapse. That is why we have constructed this retaining wall on all the three sides. Apart from this, we also provided top mat which is T12 at 6 inch center to center on both the sides. Only at the position of columns. And wherever the column uh, footing is not required, we have avoided the concreting over that place. Here we are doing the concreting with M25 grade of concrete. Before concreting you should ensure that proper cover has been provided to the footing. And you should also ensure that the concrete which we are placing is, is of good quality, workable and you should make sure that cubes has been casted for testing purpose in case of any quality checking and vibrators should be properly used wherever it is required. 
Once the rest has been completed, simultaneously retaining walls all around has to be raised up till the levels provided by your structure engineer. You should also make sure that the concrete placing in the retaining wall should be workable so that it should go easily inside the retaining wall during casting and sufficient cover has been provided. Simultaneously backfilling can, can be done once if it is curing has been done. Simultaneously water tank also has to be raised till the desired floor level. And once it is done, the backfilling can be done completely and it has to be compacted and sufficient water has to be left to settle down. Once the compaction has been done thoroughly, it has to be leveled properly and plinth beam layout has to be marked. Wherever the plinth beam comes, soil has to be excavated and prepared for PCC below the plinth beam. Here you can observe the leveling has been done placing the PCC below the plinth beam location. PCC is nothing but a concrete mix with less cement quantity. This PCC is always important because this PCC protects all the ground supported structures from losing its moisture content from the ground adjacent below it. This PCC acts as a medium between the rich concrete and the bottom ground so that it avoids the ground from absorbing the water from the rich concrete like plinth beam or footing. This is the importance of PCC. Here you can observe that rings are being prepared for plinth beam. These are 8 mm dia bars which are bent to place in the plinth beam section. Since there is difference in the flooring levels, we have higher depth of plinth beam. In normal buildings, this this much depth of plinth beam is not required since only wherever there is level difference to play with the levels we have taken this much depth of plinth beam here but that is not constant throughout the length of the building shattering has to be done properly and the concreting has to be done with rich mix of concrete like m20 or m25 concrete as per the design Plinth wheel levels has to be carefully considered whenever there is level difference in the floors. Especially plinth beam below the inner walls has to be considered very carefully. This plinth beam acts as a tie beam at the floor level. And it gives additional strength to the column since the continuous height of the column has been increased. Since we have gone for 10 feet below depth excavation, this plinth beam acts as an intermediate beam between the footing and the roof beam. It acts as a great beam and it also helps in transferring the wall load to the columns and ground below. A rich concrete has been made here of a grade M20 and it has to be casted here in the plinth beam. Make sure so that cover has been provided sufficiently. After 8 to 10 days of curing, backfilling has, can be done and it has to be allowed to be compacted thoroughly as shown in the video here. And you can also use a anti-termite product to protect your ground from ants and termites. Here we are using anti-termite called as terminator that will be available for rupees around 300 to 400 rupees per liter you can just dispense over the ground as the water penetrates inside it can be absorbed from this ground below it it will avoid whatever the termites and ants from entering from the ground this you need to apply all over your built up area this will help you from protecting your flooring and house from ants and termites at least for certain at least for certain time you can protect your flooring and joints 
from the ants so that flooring will be protected for, for long time. Thanks for watching. In case if you need any architectural or structural or any construction related assistance, you are free to contact through a WhatsApp number given below in the description box. Thanks for watching this video. Please do like and share this video so that it will be helpful for the needy one. Thank you. Thank you for watching our video. Please do like and share our video and please do consider hitting this subscribe button and click on the bell notification and select all notifications so that you don't miss any of our updates. Thank you.